Oh hi, sorry for, for being late. Uh, okay, so today we will we'll do the oil gilding for, for our icon. Uh, first of all, I wanted to... Oh, let's tag... Uh, so to help you a little bit to find better the... The video, I think now it's also it's it's really good uh, the fact that I'm um, sharing uh, every new video on the messenger on the chat so like this will be much easier to to find them. So today after I will put the the size the mixed tune we will talk a little bit about uh, about the history of byzantine iconography not necessary with dates but from from uh, from our point of view like iconographers and what period is is better to to follow and uh, to make a little bit the difference between different periods of uh, of Byzantine iconography. Okay, so that's it. So, and uh, yeah, normally now I'm doing this. I'm doing the the gilding because it's is because of the the live video and uh, because it's a demonstration. So I wanted to to show you how to do it. Uh, but normally I'm not doing the gilding in my studio because it's a lot of dust and uh, it's really hard to, you know, to avoid dust on the on the oil gilding. Like I guess everyone everyone knows that it's a the with this technique the dust it's a big big issue because the the size is sticking it's uh, attracting everything so. What I advise you to do, it's of course not to do it in your studio, just to find a different room with uh, less furniture or you know as empty as possible, or um, and to use that room only for gilding and just to lock the door and not to use it to use that that uh, that room for during the the, the drying period of the of the mixtion. Uh, or use uh, okay let's switch a little bit because i want just a short just a short introduction and to to present you also the materials and everything so so like i told you uh, use a different room only for gilding this is also it's uh, for uh, like I, like I did also for the varnish is the same thing so use only one, a room a special room for for that uh, for varnish and for for gilding uh, and uh, another advice for gilding that is working very well for me is the fact that I need to find the in that uh, room or when it's not possible because I, I I moved all the time and sometimes I was living in small apartments or uh, but uh, it's the idea is to to have that room with uh, less uh, heat so I turn the heat off and also uh, if it's possible I use it sometimes I used I use the, the the bathroom and I put a little bit the shower and like this I'm sure that uh, it's enough uh, humidity in the air because the humidity is attracting the dust so the dust is not circulating in the air because the, the air is humid or you could use if you have a room you could use the humidifier sometimes it's, it's working also and like this you will have less dust in your in your room and of course less dust uh, on your on your icon but now we'll do it in the studio because it's, it's much easier and i want to have my icon close to me to to show you 
how it will dry and to check if it's dry enough to, to put the gold leaf. I hope that uh, normally the, the size that I, I use for a for few years is, uh, is this one from my Mary. You have it also on the web website. And uh, uh, when I was in the US, because I couldn't find this Italian, maybe it is, but I don't know, I, I will check. I am sure that it's easy to buy in Europe. Uh, but when I was in the US, I used this uh, Le Franc Bourgeois Charbonnel uh, uh, from Le Franc Bourgeois. And uh, it's also 12 hour uh, dry period. Uh, but actually what I noticed, and this is the, the big, big difference, what I noticed that with this one uh, the, the period of drying it's, it could be even 12 hours. Always you need to check, it's not really important what kind of size do you use. Uh, what is the most important is to know how to check the, the, the size, the mixtion, if it's dry. And uh, I will show you how to how to do that. And on that moment, uh, you could apply the gold leaf. Uh, the idea is that different uh, the the size could uh, dry different in different uh, um, countries, different uh, because of the temperature, because of the humidity, because of different different things. So uh, also. It's really, it's really important. So it's really important to know how to check this. So I'll show you how to check if the, the size is dry and is ready to, to use. The timing, it's everything with, uh, with oil gilding, with water gilding also. But with oil gilding, the timing is really important because if the size is too dry, the gold leaf will still stick to the, to the board. But uh, because the size was too dry, uh, you will still see the, the lines, the combination between the gold leaves. Most of the time this is the, the cause because the, uh, because the size was too dry. If it's, but if it's not dry enough, then you could scratch the gold leaf. When you apply the gold leaf, you could have uh, problems. So it's, about, it's really important, the, the good timing. And I, I will show you how to, how to check uh, if the, the gold, the, the size is ready to... to to put the gold leaf on. So now I will switch to I will switch the camera to the to the icon. Uh, yes, Paul. I think it's what it. Yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, yes, I don't know. I guess Japan. So yeah, first question. Uh, about the three hour drying period. So the, the oil gilding for when we call oil gilding, we talk about uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, mixtion of size. Uh, mixtion uh, 12, there are two kinds, 12 hours drying and uh, three hours. Uh, one with, I guess, uh, what do you want to say about Japan gold size? Maybe it's is the water water base uh, size. I guess the the white or pink one. I guess is the same. Yeah, I don't I don't know it by by his by this name by Japan. But that one is uh, is like acrylic base uh, uh, mixtion and dries in fifteen minutes. But that one we will use also on this icon only for the assist, but on the garments. But I never, I, I don't use it for the for the background because that one it's easy to it's is difficult to to obtain a really a even surface, you know. So you will still see as much as you try, you will still see some brush strokes on the on the on the gold leaf. And that's why the oil size this one is these ones are better and uh, the difference between 12 and 3 hours the advantage is that the, that one of 12 hours dries a little bit slow and uh, the advantage is the fact that has you give you give because it's drying slow uh, takes more time to become even so you put it with the brush strokes but then you you let the the, the icon to, to, to dry 
and the, the size will became even, even if your brush strokes were not uh, perfect, let's say. So, but the other one with three hours because dries faster and uh, I, when I use the three hours at some point, I guess it depends, I was living in Luxembourg at that time and uh, it was drying in, in that house that I was living, it was drying in, in, in one hour and a half or something like this, so dries faster. So it, it was good to, to use, it was ready to use in, in one hour and a half. You could leave it three hours also, but you have this kind of problems when because the, the, the glue is not so sticky, like in one hour and a half. And of course, uh, uh, you'll still see the, the combination the, between the, the gold leaves. And um, so this is the, the one thing with the three hours and the 12 hours dries, like I told you, dries uh, slower and um, uh, in, it's uh, it will settle down uh, naturally let's say you know you just put it on the board with the brush strokes and then it will go and it will create a even surface the three hours is is not it's not that it's not like this because it will, is drying really quite fast not like 15 minutes but fast and uh, if you insist too much then you could still see some brush strokes on the underneath of, of the gold so but both of them are good it's important to know how to apply the size and uh, this is what I, I will show you and uh, also uh, it's really important to know where to where it's ready to use where you could put the the, the gold leaf on top so just switch the camera I will I will show you also the brush that I, I use and let's hope that in two hour and a half or something like this, our, our size will dry. It's uh, usually dry like this, but... You, you never know. Okay. Uh, some people used to to dilute this, but uh, to put a little bit of the, we could use this for washing the brushes, the uh, terpentine to wash the brushes and also to to dilute this. But usually I don't I don't like to I I use it the the way that it is. Yeah. So try to clean this the, the board as good as possible. Anyway, I'm expecting to have a lot of dust, but this is the first time when I'm doing this in, in my studio. But I didn't want it to. It's I want it. It's really important. Also, uh, you apply the go. You apply the size, the mixture on, on top, and then in the first uh, few minutes, you need to check to see how the the board is absorbing the 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 size, because in some parts could be could absorb more, in other less, because what happens is. You know, even the, the gesso uh, sometimes uh, absorbs more than in some parts absorbs more than in the others. But uh, or yeah, it depends. The wood that's absorbing also. So that's why it's really important to to check in the first minutes when the size is still uh, fluid, and when the mixture is fluid, and then <clears throat> you could add a little bit more because if you do this after one hour. The size, the mixture is starting already to dry, and if you apply another another uh, coat or uh, part of the, of size, you'll have one that is almost dry, and the other one that will start to dry in one hour. So that's why it's so one part that will dry slower. Okay.
So try to clean this part, you know, not to have something inside. I use, you could use, I use this uh, synthetic brush, you know, like uh, <coughs> Milan number 12. You could use a bigger one, depends uh, of, of the icon. Uh, yeah, we could, we could use for the gold, we could use, you could use which, which, which gold you, you like. Now I, I receive, I received this gold from a, from a friend who was buying this for me. Uh, is the 24 karat gold but usually in general I use this one also and I use uh, 20 23 karat gold so I don't like too much 22 because it's too too yellow to um, lemon color but yeah and of course 24 karat gold uh, it's uh, but I will we'll talk we'll talk about gold because I will show you also how to prepare the the, the gold leaves before applying on the on the board but after we after we all apply this i will show you this we'll talk about the gold written okay so we take like this As much as possible, I try to I try to have a surface to to make it even. But like I told you, because it's twelve hour, even if in one part I put more and here less, uh, this is really really fluid and it will settle down, so it will be well balanced everywhere. But still, we need to. To check that is the same thickness more or less everywhere so it is it is transparent but you see what I try to avoid is this kind of situation. So I, here it's obvious that I have the thickness is really high. So I try to pull this everywhere and not to leave parts like this. You could, I advise you to go just a little bit inside, inside of, of the line to be sure that the, cause here is, is easier to cover, to clean. So already I'm looking back on this part where I, I, I put the, the mixture to be sure that I didn't forget no I have no no empty spaces here because now it's easy to use it's not it's not starting to dry so it is easy, it's easy to you to to correct so that's why I'm trying to to pay attention now and then I move forward so The direction of the brush strokes is not really important. 
it's important to start from from one from one point and to continue to the other it's just to have a certain logic When you do like this in reflection, it's much easier to see if you cover everything. Usually the parts where we, we forget to, to put the, the mixture, they are here, you know, so sometimes we, we don't go too much inside and then But you could see it in reflection, so always with G, are here and here, the outline Here it's okay if it's not too much outside, you know, on the outline because we will do the okay if if we want to to do it, we will do the the red outline. So it's okay if it's just uh, one or two millimeters, it's no problem. And also, so I told you that that. Uh, The direction is not important here, but it's important to take a look here. I don't know if you could see it on the camera. It's a point, you see that it's a little bit dry. So let's look, let's have a look to see if. But it's important to come from the surface that you the, from the surface that you you put it first the 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 mixtion on to the surface the direction direction is from the surface that you put mixtion on the surface that you will will put next yes we yes uh, yes mirei so we we just apply the i i use i i use it this way without uh, dilute will without diluting so
So you need to you need to go back always to check to see if you cover hundred percent because it's easier to forget some some spots. Don't go with with too much color because um, So if you go with, with too much uh, uh, mixtion on the spots where you want to fix, then you add more, so it, it will be thicker than the the rest of that uh, spot. So that's why just go with with just a little bit, or sometimes it's enough just to pull the the size that it's in that area. Yeah, me, I will uh, answer your your question. But you are a little bit uh, in advance with the questions. Now, of course, I will show you. I will show you how to to clean the the gold leaf because when we will if after we will apply the gold leaf, we will need to paint and uh, I will to clean the the gold leaf. So now, okay. I'll just check check to see if uh, so in reflection you could easily see if there are spot spots without uh, without uh, mixed on sometimes uh, it's our fault other times is the is the the gesso that absorbs different but it's true that the fact that I I, I, I didn't use sherlock and I I burnish this uh, surface uh, it's speeding up a little bit the, the drying uh, time so it's it's also one of the the reasons why so the first first advantage is okay so So like I did here, I put a little bit too much and then I need to assure myself that it's the surface, this surface has the same thickness, so. And also it's, it's good to try to not to go back after too much time because already the size is starting to 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 draw and you could you, you'll know this uh, because of the the smell so it's starting to the terpentine is starting to evaporate But it's better to try to fix this in the first uh, few minutes than uh, after one hour or 
Okay, we could just let it to settle down a little bit and we will check in a few minutes. So I will show you how it is. So I, yeah, just to move a little bit. So sometimes I, I let it this way or to try to avoid the, the dust, I put it on top of something like this and with the face off like this and like this I have less dust so I will do this and I will put it in a different on a different table just to check again on the on the light to be sure that it's everything is well covered This needs to be closed very well because otherwise it will, it will dry. So so now if you if you have questions, uh, some questions, please let me know. We have plenty of time. I hope that it will dry in. Um, in two hours or two hours and a half, we'll see. Yeah, I, I yes, if you yeah. So in the in the last video, when we I explain about uh, Sherlock and uh, uh, the agate stone burnishing with the agate stone, I said that uh, the advantage is that the surface it's uh, much uh, brighter and uh, cleaner and, and even it's it's even so it's easier to to polish and to get uh, like a glass surface directly from the gesso than to get uh, the same the same uh, finesse the same quality of the surface uh, with the sherlock because with the sherlock applying two layers of sherlock even if it's a thin thin uh, um if the shellac is thinner still you'll have some some brush strokes and uh, with this uh, if you are an experimented painter okay you could manage to have your 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 brush strokes uh, really well done but if not it's a little bit it's a little bit harder and then you need to go back with the um, to polish with the sandpaper to get it as uh, you know to get out all the the, uh, the thick thinner uh, thick uh, surface so with the sherlock also you could have the same uh, always is the same thing uh, if we want the gold to look really really nice and to be to be an even surface and uh, to be really um, not shiny because this is more matte with oil gilding it's matte it's not shinier like uh, water gilding but at least gold is really thin and uh, everything that is underneath, every mistakes, every uh, thick layer of gesso, of, uh, not gesso, of uh, the um, sherlock is transparent. So you could see it because of the, the, the gold leaf. So that's why if the surface is prepared really well and is burnished and it's easier to get a um, glass surface with uh, a gut stone, then with the sherlock even if uh, without uh, you know without counting the the level of everyone brush strokes or uh, the ability of living really even in thin thin layers of, of uh, colors so this is the this is one of the advantages and the other one that like i told you it will dry a little bit uh, faster so now i wanted to show you so we okay i will use i will use for this it's up to you it doesn't it's not what is important with the gold um i will use this this gold leaf 
and uh, 24 23 carats is not important 22 it's up to it's up to you what it's important to use what is important about uh, uh, what kind of uh, gold we need to use okay i i prefer this one it's a little bit more expensive i prefer this german gold leaf it's also another one italian gold leaf uh, and uh, it's with the uh, with the transfer paper so this is very important not loose gold but uh, transfer paper it's much easier to handle and especially for for this uh, for for oil gilding is really important uh, the quality also it's important for oil gilding this uh, i don't know if you see it but i think it's on the box actually this is like a triple gold leaf they they say that it's it's thinner of course it's thinner than than the normal one and you could see it in the light, so you could see that it's it's almost perfect. You know, when you put it in the light, you see that there are no holes inside. Usually, the cheap gold leaf and the uh, thinner one has some some holes and some imperfections. But this one looks really, you know, you could see that it looks really really well, and it's really high quality. And uh, for for oil gilding, it's important to have a good good. So if you can. Uh, use a triple gold leaf. Use double gold leaf. It's even it's even better. It's it's uh, it's also better. This one is is much better. But uh, it's important to have good quality of gold leaf for oil gilding. For water gilding, because we we have the possibility to apply two even three layers or five layers, whatever. But uh, two layers is the <coughs> is the minimum. Uh, there we could use uh, low quality gold leaf so it's not necessary to use double or triple because uh, we, anyway we will put two two gold uh, two gold leaves uh, on that and uh, the imperfection from the first uh, uh, gold leaf is is will be covered by the second so it's no problem but here because we have only one uh, layer then it's really important to have a good good uh, gold leaf from the beginning. Uh, I saw that I had some some questions. So, well, Amy or uh, polyurethane that uh, self leaves and becomes smooth, then the mix down does not absorb. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So you are talking about that polyurethane that is like a varnish or. Yeah, I guess that that one is isolating a little bit too much. The still the, to create some kind of uh, how you call this uh, in English to some to to contact to to stick a little bit. Uh, yeah, minimax is yeah. To but that one is for for varnishing. I don't I don't think and it's quite rough. So I had it. I tried here in some icons. So the surface will be even more more rough, and you'll have some dust on top. So I don't I don't I don't know. But yeah, I, always I think it's important to to try. So in this way, you see how it is working. Is the best to practice and. Uh, uh, experimenting is is the best way to see if it's working or or not. Um, but uh, the idea is that uh, still the sur is not the the purpose of uh, uh, sherlock or uh, uh, agate stone burnishing is not to isolate completely the the size and the gold leaf from the gesso. It's just to create a a good a good connection and to create a little bit of isolation because if you put sometimes is is working well if you put directly the 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 the, the mixture on on the on the gesso could work of course it's just that you need to put a little bit more more mixture in. but it's not the same still because the 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 gesso is uh, it's shinier on the surface that we we burnish with the agate stone, and it's shinier on the surface uh, that we um, uh, put the sherlock. If you are on a scale, 
is much is much shinier it's is much shinier the the with the Agatstone than with the Sherlock and uh, uh, this uh, effect will be visible on the gold leaf so the way that we prepare the surface before applying the size and the gold leaf is very it's influencing a lot the the shine and the quality of the gold leaf afterwards after we put the gold leaves like i told you the gold is taking also the it's transparent it all the not transparent but you know if you the gold is being really thin it will take the shape of even of really small particle of dust that that will be visible uh, underneath of the the gold but i think we'll see a little a lot of, of dust because i'm doing this in the studio so i'm not expecting to have a perfect uh, uh, gold leaf background but anyway unfortunately it does not exist only you could get it perfect when you do water gilding but though there are advantages and disadvantages this technique you could do it in um, you know in a few hours anyway you write like I like you saw me you prepare the surface in uh, in one hour or less and then when you apply the gold leaf so this is all the the technique but for the um, for the water gilding could take even two days or three days depends of the size of the icon of course but okay it takes them some time more than uh, and the surface is shinier brighter depends I mean, uh, there are different different ways of everyone is seeing this differently, um, but uh, it's true that the, the the traditional, the really world traditional way was was with with water gilding and whale gilding is more recent. So I had another question. Uh, yeah. Okay. So thank you for reminding me. Actually, I will need to clean the the brush, but first. First, I will I will check again a little bit the icon. So for cleaning the brush, I, I like I told you, I showed you already. We I use this uh, terpentine, terpentine oil or essence de terpentine. It's the same that you use for 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 paint or you know for for varnish for that varnish that I use uh, okay so I will just uh, just uh, check again the icon to see if there are some spots or the, the size is dry or not I will move the camera because I wanted to, to show you also okay I could st I still see I st see a little bit of of dust, but anyway, talking in front of the icon doesn't help too much. This, but uh, okay. It seems that the surface is good and it's okay. It's no, there are no spots without. So. Okay, just here a bit. So here I did only with the brush without taking mixtion from the bottle because it's you know I was just pulling a little bit from 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 the same surface because it was just a small spot. But yeah, I think it's okay. Just to put it back, and then I will wash also the the brush. Let's hope that way. Uh, one moment. Okay. 
Yeah, just put a little bit. So I push really, really well to be sure that everything is. You could see that it's also it became a little bit yellow. So Just throw this away and usually I put it in a different bottle and uh, again to clean it better. So you could use the same the same one the terebentine you could use it also for for diluted uh, dilute the, the mixture it's all, the advantage is that it will dry a little bit faster but what i i didn't like it and i thought that that's why i tried once and why i didn't like that i thought that it's taking a little bit from the from the it's not so shinier so that's why it became also a little bit more more matte so that's why i, I just prefer to to do it only this way okay so that's it for the brush let's hope that we don't need to use it but anyway i advise you to to check the the board to see you know in the first uh, in the first minutes check in three four minutes to see if it's if it's dry or if it needs to to, to dry more so okay now it's uh, i will show you how to prepare the gold leaf first and then we will we will go we will start our in meantime until the the size will dry We'll talk about the, the, let's say, history of iconography and uh, trying to, to point out a little bit the, the important moments. So, with the gold leaf, what I, I like to do to be sure that uh, um, it will be easier to handle, I just cut the, the edges that is paper as close as possible to the gold leaf. And I will show you why. Also, we have the the prototype so i cut it one okay i'll finish my my idea just to show you why i'm doing this uh, i have another one that is it's already cut and i'm sure so the idea let's say that okay we normally when we put it let's say that this is our icon so normally when we put it on the icon we need to see uh the the border so when it's like this when i cut it already the paper it's much easier now to see, let's, okay, let's just do it. Let's say that uh, this is our, this is our icon. So when you want to put the gold leaf, you just put it, you want to put it as close as possible to this, not too much outside, not too much inside. So to be able to see this border, it's better to have it cut like this, you know, and this will, will help you. Of course, you put the gold leaf this way, and it's it's hard to see the. So you see, 
this one is with the with the paper so it's a little bit hard to see okay where i need to put it and then you go too much outside and you you lose this part so but this way is much easier because you know you see the line so you know where to to put it this is one thing and then when you have let's say that this is a gold leaf i already stick it to the to the icon and i want to put a second one the same thing i cut it the 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 edges here so i know very well where to put it not too far and not too too close because i, I see it if i have it directly this way like it's in the package it's a little bit you know it's transparent but still it's a little bit more difficult and uh, another disadvantage is when uh, i will show you when we put the gold leaf and we want to avoid uh, these lines between the between the gold leaves uh, it's really important to have the size dry as uh, ready to use but not so much dry that uh, it will it won't uh, stick very well this this uh, usually this is the problem here the surface will, will stick to the board but here uh, the the combination between the, the the gold leaves will be will be always uh, will be an obvious line uh, because the the size was too dry you know if you leave it for 12 hours or 13 hours then it's, it happens like this and uh, another thing when the size is ready to use but it's not after 12 hours it's after like uh, we'll do after two or three hours then it's still sticky and you'll stick also this paper when you'll put it on like let's say this way put it on top You'll press here and you'll stick this paper and then you'll, you'll, it's, it's easy to take off, but still you'll see some shapes, some, something like this. So you will take a little bit the shine from the, from the mixture. So that's why cutting this uh, paper and just touching with, with the gold, it's, it's much, it's much better. So, okay. And also we have the you have the the photo you could measure on the on the prototype that you follow or on the icon to see it's it's good to know to see how many gold leaves more or less you'll use so have one here say okay two three four five six six seven uh, gold leaves we'll need to to cut so also you could for okay for parts like here and we'll do the same you could cut a little bit to avoid to ruin this part you know you could you could cut it more or less the same shape like here we'll, we'll try to do that and like this you you are not throwing away so small parts of gold leaves usually i used what the 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 leftovers from this gold leaf i use it for the assist so even if there are small parts, we could we will need to use it for this uh, golden assist and here and So I, I usually I don't cut exactly the same size like I told you because the rest I'm, I'm just using for the assist but 
some people used to to try to cut it exactly the the, the size of the 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 parts that we will paint but I just I will cut it a little bit so you see you could cut with the really it's really important to have a a good scissor so to use a really good scissor not to, that cuts really well so you see it's, it's no problem because if the scissors are are old you'll you know you'll stick the the gold leaf on it and it's not it's not good okay so we just cut it for this part yeah so it's okay but anyway i will then so that's it for for the for the gold the way that you should you should uh, cut it and prepare it of course yeah i, will, I forgot i will cut this these parts i will just keep one one part to to be easy to handle and this one this part should be always outside you know uh, sorry so should be this part should be always outside outside not to stick on the on the mixed tune also because we, I, I, I think that we won't have time uh, I guess um, majority of you saw, saw my videos on the internet with gold leaf and with uh, the circles that I was you know I was doing with the, with the compass on top of the of the gold uh, it's working for for this for oil oil gilding and we will try to see we'll try to do the same usually it needs to 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 have a little bit more time because it's also about timing if it if the size is too dry the circles are not getting right and if the size is too too fluid not 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 too not too much dry then you could scratch the the gold and is it all won't look right but the idea is just I, I took a little bit of um, eraser it's important i had one that uh, i know that it's everywhere you could find it uh, this is a different one is the same the same texture uh, i don't know what was the name but the the one that uh, i posted on facebook i know that it's everywhere you could buy it from europe and the, the, it's called the factis from the company factis and uh, those are really really good what is the most important for this the eraser is to be easy to do like this it's not too much plastic you know it's not so it's not really rigid like uh, this one for example so this one is really this one is it's hard to to break you know it's not this one is is better and you but you you have it you have that one on the on your uh, on the album so you have the the brand and everything and i'm sure i i brought some, some from us from europe so they are everywhere um and what i did is this was a thing for from the from the brushes and okay i could just you cut just a little bit uh, let me see uh, otherwise you, you cut a small you know cut a small part and then you put it inside it's the idea is to find the, to find the tool to find a way to to fix this here 
to have it steady and then to put it on the, on the compass so it's, it's not it's not big deal so and then okay we could it's better to do it before to create the surface here that it's already what is important is to cover more a bigger uh, uh, thicker surface and then you just let it let only the weights of the of the compass but i will show you so we'll try to we'll try to do that after the the mixed tune is ready and um, so if you if you have uh, if you have some some questions before we will start to we'll start to talk about the uh, uh, the history of Byzantine iconography is not with the dates or something like this. I'm, I I I love history, but uh, uh, I always I am not uh, you know my my memory is not uh, absorbing so much dates and uh, moments. I'm more interested in the in the in the the things that I I like and uh, I try to to use my my memory and everything for for remembering uh, icons, not necessarily the names of the icon of the or the 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 names of the painters, so I'm not really into this kind of uh, 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 dates, this kind of approaching on history. Uh, so if if you if you have questions regarding the the oil gilding, it's yeah, please let me know. Or if not, we'll start we'll start to to talk about about icons. There are there are different albums, you know. I have uh, I have a few. I have two albums here that uh, they are from uh, from some monasteries, from Montatos, and uh, I use them. Okay, I use I like them because they try to put the, the icons. It's you know the icons uh, from from Greece, from different countries in some kind of uh, you know chronological uh, order so okay what is the most important for us is i think first of all and uh, what i wanted to to explain to you is to realize the fact that uh, in the history of humankind in all the fields there were period of times of uh, uh, decline and periods of time of uh, uh, developing and uh, new discovering and really really the, the on the on the different levels but we are interested in the cultural level and we are interested in exactly on the on the Byzantine iconography so we have icons from uh, uh, you know we have icons from the from the first centuries we know some icons so uh i want to to apologize from the beginning i'm not really big fan of of dates and years so maybe if i do some mistakes uh it's, it's okay so i just wanted to, to to let you know but you know like i i will never be the that kind of of, of uh, painter who know you know that icon was from exactly from the uh, 1200 uh, uh, year or was from the 8th 6th century i think it's it's not it's not uh, maybe it's important for some people but for me it's not so much important is what is the most important is what i could learn from those icons and uh, what is the best period of time that uh, uh, could influence me and help me to understand better the, the Byzantine iconography? We, we talk about Byzantine iconography, we talk, uh, talk about different aspects. Uh, I know that it's, uh, you know, some people are a little bit sensible to, to this subject, like the what means correct, what means canons of Byzantine iconography, what means tradition. Uh, I think it's it's a little bit is not so so difficult to to so just to do a short, uh, a short introduction. Uh, what I wanted to to say is that I think it's it's not difficult. We 
you know, it's not difficult to identify and to understand what is tradition and what is uh, um, what means uh, pure Byzantine uh, style. Uh, is doesn't mean that the, this one is excluding others in the with the icons is the same thing like in the in the spiritual life and I'm always comparing this we could say with some limits of course we could say that there are different ways of uh, working for our salvations you know for our salvation so this is the uh, we need to start from this point because this is the most important thing in our life so if we we didn't understood this it's we have a problem so uh, it's true that it's it's easy to to uh, be distract and to do something else with your life at this point or in different points of your life and to follow different paths different direction that are not getting us to the salvation or getting us close to God but we need to know and that what is our purpose so this is the, the main purpose and this is the purpose of uh, and this is the purpose that god illuminated and the holy spirit uh, inspired uh, some painters uh, during the history of of uh, uh, humankind to develop uh, uh, a style an artistical style of uh, representing the, the especially the so we, when we talk about the saints they are people like us who manage to 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 be, be saved and to to please god and to um to get actually to obtain the, the purpose of of our humankind we were created by god uh, by his image and we were we are called to to became uh, to became like him you know to became gods with g with small g you know so um, and uh, we this is the way this is what we see in the icons the persons the people like us with flesh and bones who spiritualize their body who manage to to give more power to the holy spirit inside of them than to the to the material side always is this war between these two worlds they need to work together for serving the same purpose for becoming like like god but sometimes they are in some kind of uh, competitions or war but yeah okay so uh we we find this uh, perfect harmony without no we, we with perfect harmony in in the icons and uh the icons are, this is the main, main thing, main purpose of the icons, to represent uh, saints, people like us who managed to become like, like God and who are saved and who are living in the kingdom of, of heaven and uh, close to the, to the, to the holy, holy light and the, the holy, and to gain, like I told you in, in different videos, I told you like uh, the, the, the best definition of our purpose in this life was uh, given by Saint Seraphim from Sarov and he said the purpose of this life is not salvation it's actually uh, gaining the Holy Spirit but on the moment when you live all your life on the earth and uh, the life after that with uh, gaining the Holy Spirit you are already saved because it's impossible to do things that are uh, going in the wrong direction. You are going directly to, to be saved to the salvation and to, to be close to, to God. You are already living, you know, like living in the, in the close to, to God by the, because of the presence of Holy Spirit. So, uh, and this, this for me, is this definition of Saint Seraphim the Sarov is very important because I found it represented in, in icons in different, different small or big details. And that's why I told you about the, the light, about the reds on the nose, on the eyes, on the... So, these are symbols for the presence of the, of the Holy Spirit. And also the highlights, of course, on the face, on the garments. The way that the, the garments uh, are painted uh, a little bit more round, like, like uh, you know, all the, because 
is the the Holy Spirit who is inside. There are no bones and uh, and um, and flesh, because they are spiritualized uh, bodies. So I will stop just for for one second to have a look on the icon to be sure that it's it's okay. And I advise you to do the same. So always to do the same thing. So. I don't know how many minutes uh, have passed, but I think now it's already, it should be, we need to be sure that uh, the surface is okay, so everything looks, looks normal. So that's it, it's uh, in I was I was I was in love with with uh, I didn't I didn't study so much the history of art in general. Um, I was uh, let's say in the the uh, the art uh, not not Christian without not no Christian influence. Uh, the art that I loved the most was the the impressionist period in time. Of course, the Renaissance. I was also really impressed about the Renaissance and the the the, the high level of, of of painters. And I used to to draw, uh, you know, different different portraits after Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. Um, and um, but uh, what I noticed in general, in my with my my small my small knowledge of history of art in general, what I noticed that the majority of artists. From the beginning of the, of uh, humankind until now, until now, yeah, I guess also some of them are looking for something, but they they don't know what is it. But it's uh, it, they were looking also the impressionist uh, somebody uh, like um, I guess uh, uh, Renoir was saying that. Uh, he was a little bit melancholic about the period when maybe the period of Renaissance when the painters they they were choosing religious subjects in the impressionist painting you don't find necessary subjects religious uh, subjects it was it was already in France at that uh, period of time no no not so much uh, uh, religion in art in general so but in, also in music and also in in in, in paintings uh, the majority of artists they were looking to represent uh, something from this world but to go a little bit deeper at uh, the essence uh, the essence of the of the 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 portraits that they were painting the the nature the landscapes they were what they were looking even if they were aware or not what they were looking they were trying to represent was the 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 holy spirit the divinity that was inside because uh, we know about the revelation, the natural revelation of God in the world by his creation. So looking at trees, looking at the forest, looking at rivers, we learn something from God. We learn something about God because it's like, of course, like looking at one uh, icon, you learn something about that, uh, the creator, about the painter who did that. It's the same thing in, in nature. So, and it's called like uh, natural uh, revelation of, of God. Um, so they were, they were trying to, to, to represent this uh, essence and this, let's say, transcendental, you know, uh, side of the, of the, the nature or, or of the portraits. So, and uh, I was reading this in, in different books, and you could see this general idea in the, every every painter's mind. And uh, then uh, you discover, and it was in different scale. And then I discovered the Byzantine iconography, and then I realized with small steps, because even now I'm learning, I'm learning a lot, and it's, it's normal. It's a life process, and we have so much, so much to learn, and so much to discover in the the Byzantine tradition and in the icons. And uh, I was I was discovering how the Byzantine painter he actually managed to accomplish this this uh, uh, wish or this uh, this uh, uh, search for of uh, of artists in general, and it's easy to understand this was possible 
because like everything like every big thing in this life everything is possible with the help of god and people are are doing are creating and are, are doing really really beautiful things and uh, really important things for for humankind that are helping a lot uh, and of course the direction that god is helping people is always to toward him you know to meet god this is the the best direction because god knows he christ said i am the the i am the truth i am the way you know this is what is the most important and this is what we we need to look in our life and um, god inspired these uh, painters from early ages in byzantine iconography and uh, uh, give them inspiration like uh, he gave inspiration. I always make this comparison between writing between the Bible and the other books. So that's why in my mind it's very easy to make the difference between um, art in general and uh, between uh, Byzantine iconography. In the Byzantine iconography, the influence and the, the, the uh, revelation and inspiration of God, it's obvious. And also happens in some some form of art, or they are they are some some parts, but it's it's just a a, a smaller scale, you know. You could see just a little bit of uh, you know uh, sparks, or just a little bit of inspiration in different form of arts, and it's true that is helping is helping uh, people uh, a lot. But in the icons, you have the the fullness of uh, Holy Spirit of the inspiration of God um, and uh, it's uh, another another thing that I was I heard uh, uh, was a curator from one one exhibition at some point and um, you could maybe you because you, you are from different countries and uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong and uh, I don't see this correctly but uh, my uh, point of view is based on the experience of people from US, from different countries of Europe who, who told me that uh, it's, it's totally different. So this lady, this curator was saying that in one exhibition and she was trying to uh, bring arguments for a really weird style of doing icons, really modern icons. Uh, I don't I don't want to give the name anyway it's not this is not really important but it was obvious that the direction was uh, really far away from the tradition and uh, she was trying to to come in you know to to speak about icons and using a language that is fitting more in the modern art you know so this is I I like not to I I think that it's important not to mix the both of them so uh, I think for us it's important to know very well if we are artists or if we, we want to be artists or we want to be iconographers. It's true that there are canons saying that to be a good iconographer you need to be a good artist, you know, like a, at the technical level, like ability to draw very well, to be, but not to to think like a artist. The, the modern artists or artists in general, they will, in, especially the modern artists, they are, they are looking now for to impress, to shock the, the, the people, the ones who are in, not necessary to give some, some direction or to, to, let's say, to feed the, the, the soul. And of course, not, not to get, get as close to, to God, maybe in the, the opposite direction. And uh, uh, she was saying that, uh, uh, trying to, to bring arguments saying that, but this, this kind of art, that that's kind of iconography, that it's a little bit modern and uh, maybe bold, too bold. It's for the people who, who never heard about Byzantine, uh, Byzantine iconography. And she said, for me, because I'm Orthodox, seeing an icon, uh, like an icon that it's, uh, you know, it's painted uh, like a Cretan school or um, Paleologian uh, period or a Serbian icon. Uh, speaks a lot, this saying, because I'm used to it, so I, I know it. But for somebody who comes from a, from a, a background, has a background uh, uh, without no Christian education, without no knowledge of, of churches, of Byzantine iconography, says nothing. It's, it's, it speaks nothing to him. 
And this was, I have my first experience was with one of my landlords from Luxembourg who was a theist and he had no connection. He had no true, didn't knew nothing about church, about Christ. And I saw him a uh, few icons of mine and he was like, he was, he used to, he used to buy arts and uh, uh, paintings in general. And so he stayed there contemplating and looking at those icons and analyzing like, like nobody else, you know. So I was, I was so, so much impressed. And then he ordered two two of my icons, and uh, and I said, yeah. So this this is possible. Also, people without no background in 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 uh, iconography, they know to appreciate, and the icons are speaking to them. And this is 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 totally true, and it happens also. And I have also I, I know people who who entered in one Orthodox church at some point and they saw the church and the paintings and they were like they, uh, they it was a whole new world who opened to them and they were so much impressed without not even know what what happened with them you know because the the explanation it's easier is the the Holy Spirit is the presence of the Holy Spirit who is speaking to everyone you know you know about the uh, we will have after Easter, we will have uh, Pentecost when the apostles started to speak in foreign languages. Actually, uh, there are different interpretations, but one of them that is really close to be, I think, is the 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 the, the, the best the, the best one is saying that actually they were speaking in their language and the presence of the Holy Spirit was helping the people to hear the preach of the, the apostles in their languages. Because if God can do this, who could, who could do it? So it's the same thing with icons. If the icons are uh, inspired by, by the Holy Spirit and they are done in the, the, the traditional correct way, they will speak to anyone. And because there is the presence of the Holy Spirit who will, who will open their eyes and what I think the most important element when we are presenting icons to people who have no clue about it or they are not religious, it's to to follow the tradition and to do good icons and not to try to adapt our icons or the icons of 14th century to to their to their level or the level that we think that they have. Uh, it's the same thing with the Bible, you know, we, we, the Bible is really old, but this doesn't mean the Bible is really actual, you know, it's a, it's a, a it's speaking to us in every, it was speaking like, uh, like uh, 100 years ago or 200 years ago, and it will be the same in, in the future also, because is the revelation in this the word of, of God. So, Okay, now we'll start. I will show you the I will show you the images. If it's no to have questions and you want to stop me to to ask me different things, so so everyone knows, of course, this icon of Christ from from Sinai. Uh, I guess it's uh, something like six, eight century. What is the most important is to, of course, to to know more or less uh, what period of time uh, this icon was created. It's uh, in in cost in caustic, I guess I don't know what is the the correct pronunciation with wax and colors and uh, I, I I didn't try this technique. I understood that it's quite difficult to to work with, but yeah, it's a icon. A lot of people know. They there were a lot of speculation about the things about this icon uh, with the uh, yeah. So um, so. It's it's a little bit see the the, the technique uh, is at the at the beginning is is really really interesting. So then this is also more or less the same. Maybe it's the eighth eighth second uh, uh, seven yeah second uh, century. This one also. This is a little bit uh, naive, the, the crucifixion, 
but has has really we could learn from all from all the from all the icons from all the centuries um and to take elements from different different centuries but yeah, here this one it's nine ten century it's already also like like a painting on glass on the Romanian tradition This is from the 10th century, some icons, yeah, just what is, what I want to, to show you and to point, just to look a little bit at the, you know, the way that the garments were painted, you know, everything, the way that is. So, this, this album is uh, taking, it's called like Eleniki Techni, Byzantine icons, Eleniki Techni. And uh, it's a collection of albums, some of them are with icons, some others with fresco, with mosaic, and uh, this one with, with icons. And takes icons from the 1st century until the 19th century, if, I, if I'm not wrong. Okay, so... So, the paint, how the, 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 the icons were done in the... 10th century, 9th century. Uh, here it's already 11th century, so the icon starts to be to be. Uh, yes, Amy, I will. We should be no more. Uh, at the end, I will, I will try to to give you this. And send you, and also I will add it to the to the album to the yes to the album with the. Uh, with with photos so uh so you you, you could see already that uh, it's not so so much naive and it started to be more more uh, be better painted this also it's a really nice uh, icon of the Isis. so so this is what is 11th century okay here are some like as really really small so uh, Saint Catherine this with the feast from from Christ life this is the nativity of course is there are different different elements and different uh, Well, you have you have everything here. The okay. I will pass this uh, quite quickly this area because I want to to stay and to show you a little bit more the. So these were, let's say, in a way, they were the the beginners, the beginnings of the the Byzantine iconography and it's a process it's a developing process and uh i started at the beginning uh, an idea and i remember now that i didn't finish so what i wanted to to point you and the the idea also with this uh with talking a little bit about the history of of iconography in images is the the fact that uh we need to be aware that uh, we are very lucky. We live in a moment when the Byzantine iconography is developing a lot. And uh, it's true that it's coming from mostly from the Orthodox country, uh, let's say at this technical level with, uh, with a lot of, uh, of good uh, iconographers. But on the other side, uh, the the big uh, the, the important things that happened and I, I noticed this when I was when I was studying at the university, uh, we had we had some 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 good painters already at that point in Romania. But what was missing it was the literature on the on the subject on the Byzantine iconography, and this uh, was uh, more you know. This, there were more books about uh, Byzantine iconography outside of the Orthodox countries. It's true that it was also in some Russian Russian uh, writers and uh, 
but they also there were a lot of a lot of writers from 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 countries like France or England who had a big interest in in uh, in uh, in the subject and uh, they were writing books uh, making interviews and promoting uh, Byzantine iconography so it was a harmony in a way you know with uh, uh, with a lot of painters and now it's it's a uh, I think it's really we we live in a really really good moment and uh, the Byzantine uh, iconography was uh, rediscovered and uh, is developing and there are a lot of a lot of good painters so that's why on the other side is starting already some kind of movement of really modern uh, painters who I don't know it's just my point of view I don't want to some of them I know and uh, I, I know a little bit why I'm uh, what I'm talking about. Uh, some kind of move of uh, lowering the the level of Byzantine iconography because if you go too much into one minimalist uh, style, then you lose a lot of of uh, knowledge and a lot of wisdom and uh, from the from the Byzantine traditional traditional icons. This is the, of course, the Vladimirskaya. So it's already 12th, 12th century. These are some some mosaics from 12th uh, century. So. We could see here, I think it's so this was a restoration, I guess. So you see how different looks. This is also really important how to do it. So you see that uh, what is the color from the drawing on the mosaic here. And you see what is the color here. You know, totally superficial. Just adding some some small parts of stone. Look uh how how nice is done everything and here the restorator just put it here some some stones without no no meaning the worst enemy of a restorator or a painter it's it's being superficial so this is the the scale of saint uh, john climax and uh, this was in 12th century we we find this uh, halo you know circle on the sinai icons also on this icon with the uh, crucifixions with with saints around the is also in 12th, 12th century it's still so you see the style is is more developed a little bit but still has some some naive influence you know the way that the garments are painted and everything the portraits here also this icon from the 12th, 12th century here is the same so it was something Twelve. Okay, so here the crucifixion and all these things. Here, look at the the body of Christ. So we'll we'll come back. We'll come back to to this to this icon because I want to make a little bit uh, to make a little bit the comparison. The the main point is to try to to make you to understand. Uh, what is the best period in time that uh, it will help you most to develop and of course like if somebody you know we have the possibility to travel from one uh, point to another and uh, somebody is telling you you know you could get there faster by plane or another possibility is by foot or by train or but it's lower and takes you more so of course we will choose the the the, the not necessarily the fastest but the best uh, the best uh, road the best uh, um, way it's the same thing with 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 the icons and what i wanted to show you so if we have 
So we have this kind of icons, we have this kind of crucifixion, you know, we could do a reproduction to start to learn from this, these ones. But on the other side, we have a, a crucifixion done in the 14th century or the 15th century that is much better. That's why it's really important to go and to follow those ones because we love, we will learn even more. So this is what I wanted to, I wanted to point a little bit. Doesn't mean that these are, are not good, but it was a period of time. It's like like a child. Doesn't mean that he's not walking, but when he's really small, but when he is becoming bigger, he he walks uh, faster and better. But that was a period of transition, and it was important. It's the same thing in the history. So. Uh, it's a style that was developing and what I wanted also, I want to, to understand is that in the history of, of everything, but also in our, in our case, in the history of Byzantine iconography, what is the most important to see is that the, 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 the art is more refined and this became, is much better. The drawing is better, the garments are painted better, so you will see it in the next, in the next icon when we'll reach the 14th, 15th century. So uh, that's why it makes no sense when you see modern icons who are not respecting the tradition and they are minimalizing and taking out the the layers of, uh, of highlights uh, taking out a lot of elements from the traditions and choosing a really minimalist style it's like going back forward you know so instead of uh, developing and they call it that actually it's a development so they are doing modern icons that are supposed to be better than the old ones so if you don't see this in a modern icon, then it means that it's not serving the purpose and it, it's a decline in a way, it's not actually... Uh... So here is more or less the same style, maybe it was the same, the same painter. Here, see the chromatic, it's, you know, you see the chromatic is was really nice, it's okay, but still the garments, it's hard to see the, it's really, they are really heavy just one background color and one highlight so here you see this the drawing on this icon okay we'll we'll move we'll move closer to the 14th century this is also 12th century uh, and our this is a annunciation from the 12th century you see the garments on Virgin Mary, but I will, okay, we'll talk about this, comparing the, the other. This is also 12th century from Mount Sinai. It's a, it's a nice, of course, a nice, nice icons and, and see the, the angel and the, the assist and everything. This is 12th. Just to move the camera a little bit closer, so a little bit further to see the whole picture. This is an icon with Moses. This is already 13th centuries. This is already starting to look a little bit much, much better. You see the assists, they are done really, really, really well. And uh, the portraits. This is also thir 13th century. It's a little bit starting or to be a little bit different from, you know, from this, this portrait, 12th century. So you could see, you could see the, the difference. Here we have a, we have a crucifixion. But still, look at the garments, they are a little bit more like a renaissance, like realistic garments, not so much Byzantine style. Here, of course, of course in, there are also different, different kind of painters in different, some of them, if they are 13th or 14th century, they are doing different kind of icons. Some of them are, are better, some others. Here another example of uh, of an 
icon that was uh, restored. So you know, you see, it's a mess. So look how it put the stone and everything, and how was here, how all of this garment was was done. So now we are starting to see real Byzantine iconography. So this is, of course, all of you know this uh, from uh, it's a Ohrid, I guess it's a Serbian Serbian uh, icon from 14th 14th century, and. Uh, look all the details all the elements everything is is perfect for me when i see this kind of icon is sending me immediately to to god to the perfection of god and everything it's obvious everything it's in the right place nothing bothers me so everything it's from also from my from my from the technical point of view but also spiritual everything makes makes sense so just to make a little bit of comparison to 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 help you understand so looking having this uh, memorize this image of uh, and then we'll see another the annunciation that i show you from uh, what was it 12 12th century okay here also we have annunciation 12th century so you see all these details, the garment, everything, how it was painted. You have this one, this annunciation, you see how the garment of Virgin Mary. It's, you know, is you see the light, this is really strong. It's really strong, bright, bright color here. Uh, the, the highlights, they are really, really thick. A lot of black here, everywhere, you know, so it's... And here you see the perfection. So you see how this here was the the dark accents here it's a little bit brighter because this is is in front here it's more brighter because it's more in front this part is brighter because this leg this leg it's on different level on the back and this one is in front everything the drawing is perfect i don't know if i have details unfortunately i don't have details for this icon but let me have a look. Maybe I have it on my my iPad. It's one thing to try to get inspired from this kind of of prototypes, and it's a different thing to get inspired from from these ones or you know from or this one. This is the the crucifixion. But anyway, you see, this one is much better than uh, this is the 13th century uh, crucifixion and is much better from the 12th, 12th century crucifixion here. Okay, here we have also an icon with Virgin Mary from 14th century. It's of course, it's a big look at the the portrait, the garments. Uh, it's a totally big difference from the also from this one, the thirteen. But we had even comparing with this one, you know, the garments and everything on that one is, you know, the garments and the way that they are they are done. Comparing with this one and. I'm not so when I'm when I'm talking and I'm pointing you to the 14th 15th century iconography is not only from the technical level because this is not the main purpose of of Byzantine iconography to be everything draw perfectly it's also from the theological point of of uh, of level the everything the i was talking uh, about the, the the byzantine perspective the fact that the, the point it's it's outside you know you see all these these lines here and everything also with the garments what is uh, uh it's this part it's it's also uh, in front and is it's much much lighter 
what is uh, darker is also a little bit uh, lower you know the what is on the back it's also lower just to 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 create this this perspective also that all the the points are 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 coming to toward us so what what else about yeah this so let's see another icon they are also 14th century of course there are different different icons like in our days so this is also a painter from the 14th century but the way that this icon is worked this looks more like a, so okay so maybe this is 12th actually okay this is i guess it's 12th century but you see the difference this is 13 already 13th century but this is much much better and much work on it Then we have some some icons, uh, some Serbian icons. These are, are really really beautiful, and the garments and everything, the composition is is perfect. Unfortunately, the quality is not really good of the 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 icons. They were deteriorated in time, but this one it's a really really beautiful icon also from the 14th century. So the theology is really important. You see a little bit that the arm, just to get it. Just a little, because I just a little bit to to point you. It's one important element is the fact that Eve is is like is like she's growing from the from underneath uh, uh, Adam his arm it's unusually really really high it's like like his arm is broken in a way you see that this, this was supposed to be somewhere here and it's really really high you now the shoulder is here but the arm is, is really so just to to show this this fact that uh, he was growing from under from this uh, from from he was taking one part from adam and the other element i don't know i hope that you'll notice but you'll see it also in different different icons is that uh, the adam is holding his christ is holding adam and adam is holding his arm like like this like his arm is is broken you know like this way just this this movement this thing you'll see it in in several icons and what means in this uh, particular icons and in general it's a sign of humility and on the other side it's a sign of showing that adam was not able to to resurrect himself to 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 uh, and to be saved from from uh, uh, hell uh, only with and this was possible only with the help of of god of christ and the sacrifice of of christ was uh, making this possible to resurrect him and uh, the world the patterns from the old testament so here of course with them Edom here it's uh, uh abel and uh, here we have the david and killing solomon here here we have saint john the baptist here we have the, the 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 kingdom of heaven with the angels. I have I have also this icon. I did a production after after this. Uh, these are the doors of of hell who are broken by by Christ. So look, this also uh, 14th century crucifixion. It's it's really really different and really really important. Uh, it's. So I was looking at this icon and I noticed this Saint uh, Saint John the Apostle, the Theologue, looks, you know, the garments looks, they are painted really well, everything, the volume and everything looks, looks really nice. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Paul. Uh, it's a good question and I'll, I will come back. So in, in some icons, you'll see, you'll see the, the, the hands the hands uh, that uh, uh, 
uh, are are covered. Uh, in general, I don't know where which which one one of the hands is covered and the other one the other one. It's the idea that with the, with the hands that are covered, you'll see it mostly in in icons. Uh, very obvious in the icon of uh, of uh, the baptize of Christ when the angels are covering their their hands. It's just a sign of of humility and showing the respect for for uh, you know for 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 that for that person and eve also is showing the her her respect and uh, uh when it's something really holy you are not supposed to to touch it with your bare hands so and it's a way of receiving receiving something that is really precious so and uh so what i wanted to uh, to point here in this icon, you see the the body of Christ is it's done perfectly, but you see something that is it's a little bit. It seems that it was done by a different different uh, uh, different painter, and it's the image of uh, Virgin Mary, and she's she's like like a candle or something, and she is just painting her deep humility and the the fact that she was really really humble and in in general. We she was she was really discreet in the history of humankind, and we we know a lot of things about the apostles, about the uh, of course about Christ, but uh, not so much not so much about about Virgin Mary because she was from the beginning until the end of her life she was really discreet and she was really really humble, and that's why uh, was possible. Uh, for for us to to uh, it was possible to receive uh, to to give birth to to Christ because God saw his uh, she's she's a uh, soul and that's why she he chose her so here we have some 14th century icons still some here it's a mosaic really nice just let me have a look a little bit excuse me have a look on the next one so still we still need to wait a little bit It's true that with the mixtion you need to we need you need to it will start when the moment when the mixtion starts to to dry and the uh, terpentine to evaporate is uh, you'll you'll smell it so is and and that point you could you could try to 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 check. I will I will show you next time I will show you because I, I forgot I will show you how to check it's just you could touch a little bit in one corner to see if it's still uh, uh, soft or it's not it's not dry yet so this is also mosaic, but you see also the mosaic is really, really well done. This is also a mosaic with the... The 14 martyrs. Very, very beautiful and the garments are done really, really, really well. This is also another mosaic, Saint John the... Evangelist, and here there are some. I'll call this uh, with a paint that you. Email, or you call it? I guess with email. Now the mosaic. This one, Saint Saint Nicholas, is really, really good, really good mosaic. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Mire. So you could you could touch in in one corner, but I will I will show you because now I, I remember, so it's it's better. Uh, 
So here, for example, I'm putting anyway the paint. So even if my gold leaf doesn't look perfect, it's no problem. So I could, I could touch this surface. And if if it's still sticky or if I, I don't know if we can see it, but I, I see my, uh, now you could, when you put it, you could still see your uh, fingerprint. So it's, it's not good yet. What the, the, what we need to get when it's ready to use and when we could apply is to, to have it a little bit to, to be able to do this way and not to leave our fingerprints and to obtain a squeeze, you know, a sound, a little bit of sound like, like touching a plastic bag or something like this. But now if I put just the finger, it's not dry, dry yet and uh, my fingerprints stays here. So that's why we need to leave it a little bit more. Here, so you should see this port is a little bit of uh, uh, Renaissance influence, but. Uh, with the garments, but still it's Byzantine and the colors and everything. This is a really beautiful uh, icon in the chromatic and the blue and the reds are, are really, really beautiful. Uh, a really, really nice interpretation on this icon was given by a Romanian theologian uh, but not on the icon he was talking about uh, because I didn't some some of the the theological meaning uh, is me who made the connection between the the theology and the uh, uh, talking about about uh, uh, Christ life and about Bible and uh, finding these uh, meanings in in the icons so it's very, it was really important. That's why it's really important for us to, to follow the old iconography, even if we don't know why the painter did uh, uh, this way or the other way, or he chose one particular color or another. It's, uh, it's very, it's very important to, it's very important to follow the old prototype. And uh, on this field, on this attitude, I'm sure, and I experienced this in my life, God will give you meaning. But if you have something on that icon and you decide to, let's say, this color of Christ that I want to talk, you, uh, talk to you about, uh, the, the garment, the fact that here he has the both garments and here has only one. And during the, the, the passion, he is only with one garment. Uh, the the what is the the most uh, the most important thing is to try to to do exactly the same color even if you know why or you're supposed to do this or you don't know because this way you are respecting the tradition and the icons that you are painting for somebody or for a church will be done correctly and on the other side you know, on this way on this attitude on this approach on doing icons God will give you because it's a sign of being humble. If you from this is from is my point of view, so I don't is you know, I don't want to offend nobody. It's my point of view, and this it was my approach on doing icons. I didn't understood why this icon needs to be. You could say, but, but okay, Christ needs to be okay here, and we, we know the passage from the Bible, and he was uh, washing the foot of the apostles. Uh, and of course, he was uh, taking off his uh, his uh, clothes. Uh, and but okay, I said. But you could say, oh, but I, I think that Christ should should be dressed also with this blue cloth. And uh, uh, you decided. Well, anyway, the painter had no clue about it, and maybe he forgot to do it. And I will put it this this cloth here. And I will put it also here and here and here everywhere because this is Christ needs to be dressed with blue and red, and uh, and it's uh, it's really it's really important to respect the tradition and then in the meantime God will give you will give you answers and understanding of of the meanings. 
So the the idea is that Christ here was was dressed. Well, one element that is very important. Christ, instead of like comparing with the uh, uh, instead of uh, you know instead of uh, uh, sitting in the middle because he was he was the most important and this is obvious in the Byzantine iconography also Christ is painted really big comparing with the other with the apostles this doesn't mean that he was he was taller than the rest of the apostles the idea is that uh, just to put it The idea is that in in general in icons in all the icons you will find you will see daisies you will see icons where Christ the uh, the communion of the apostles and everywhere Christ is painted bigger than the uh, the, the rest of the the people in in that icon. But this is one thing. It was the idea that in Christ even here at the Last Supper said the one who wants to be uh, the leader between yourself needs to be your servant and uh, uh, this is one sign in one sign and uh, washing the foot it's a, of course it's it's also symbolic and metaphoric and and uh, uh, on the other side he is not sitting in the middle like in the the last supper of uh, leonardo da vinci uh, he is sitting on the corner and uh, from the tradition, uh, we we know that uh, on the corners of the tables, they are sitting the people who are at the table to serve, to bring food to, because Christ was their their teacher, their their God, and but on the other side, he showed them that the ones who wants to be the the teachers, they they need to be the the servants, and he was serving actually at the table. None of the apostles were doing this. Christ was the one who was serving them. Uh, just to give them to give them the example, so that's why it's really important. And uh, it's true that there are some icons also with Christ in the middle, but uh, uh, the the majority of of the of uh, icons are 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 painted this way with Christ at the one corner. And we know that the 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 red is the human uh, human. Um, uh, side and uh, the blue is the divine one and we see that God is undressed from the from the this one doesn't mean that he was but he he showed that uh, he was more uh, you know more he he was more more humble it's a sign of showing them that humble and uh, uh, also in during all this uh, during all this all this period of time he is in the theology the the terms are a little bit hard to translate but it's not he was giving up to his uh, uh, being a, a god but he was so humble and he went uh, to the sacrifice like a, like a lamb and also when he was praying uh, sometimes we we interpret that uh, Christ was afraid of of dying, but it, in the, the the theology is deeper and it's not about this. It's not about the the fact. It was it was actually because Christ took all of our our sins and took all of our fears also. It's our, it was our fear of of dry uh, dying and of uh, uh, being sacrificed. And he took everything from the human human nature. But on the other side, you will see. On the other side, you will see some some blue reflection that usually we don't have it when we paint the icon of Christ. Uh, let me see. When we paint the icon of Christ, we don't have blue reflection on the red garment. Always, it's. Uh, So anyway, my of course, yeah, we have this this icon of mine. You see, or we could go to all the all prototypes. is is better to 
but anyway i think everyone everyone knows very rarely maybe but maybe more into the onto the modern icons but in the old icons you always see christ with uh, here at this stasis you will see christ with with red garment but no no blue no blue reflection so but here still because he was not it always he was both of them human and god but here it was the deepest moment of of uh, of uh, humility when he was giving up uh, uh, was he was he was more 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 human than than god and then you see here also is the same the same thing and uh, what was what are the elements so yeah uh diane it's asking uh some point will you please explain the method of painting yeah the idea is that and um i would this will be for the what what do you what do you mean by the method of painting byzantine garments because i i i, I thought that i i did that already with all the garments that we painted so just be please be more precise because i don't Because for every icon, of course, here with the icon of Virgin Mary, we'll have uh, even more garment. And uh, uh, but I think it's always I was I was this was the the idea to explain and to to make you understand what was the the method. But yeah. So here also, this is the the icon, one of the icons that I love. It's very dear to me. With uh, you know, we talk about Saint uh, Gerasimus from Jordan and the lion. So of course, yeah. Again, you see the garments and everything. Uh, comparing with so this is the 14th century icon. Let's see some garments on. Also here on this this icon of, of Christ or. Or bigger icons see the garments here here also on the Virgin Mary it's a, it's a more developed and more precise uh, style and also it's full of, of theology and everything uh, makes makes sense so here it's also there were also some other painters more naive also in the 14th centuries like like or now now also this icon also it's for 14 but in general the the best uh, period of icons uh, they were 14 15th century even this this small small icons they are they are the same so you see they are they are much better from the series that we saw you see in 12th 12th century you see here See the garment here, for example, is just white garment with one line. So, because this is really minimalist style, you know, it's like, but this was just the beginning, you know. There, uh, but if we want to learn doing icons, uh, if we want to learn doing icons, following this kind of garments, we will be really easy to do but we are not learning anything so uh so amy uh, some garments seem to have more added shadow uh shadow what do you what do you mean about shadow so for let me see if i if i manage to answer with with one of the with the garments so these are, are good also but Ah, okay, we maybe I found that I will find that I can over here. So you you are you are seeing more shadow than maybe more highlights, not necessarily shadow because the shadow in general for the for the icons is not not so much. It is, but uh, like in this icon with. Uh, 
uh, no, actually the uh, I I don't know what what kind of icons do you talk about, but the Byzantine icons on the Byzantine icons, and I will show you this on all the all the icons. The base coat is actually the darkest color on that garment, and we could we could look at look here everywhere. So the base coat it's something here and everything that is 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 brighter of course if, if skips, uh, except the the okay the darkest color if you want is the drawing color and the base coat uh, comparing with the highlights it's is darker than the highlights uh, let me see but yeah let me see one So even here, for example, it's a miniature. It uh, it's uh, so you see the okay here. The color was was this was something like this. The base color. Then the drawing is darker, and here it's it's much brighter. He put it the color much brighter, and then you have like one two highlights. Of course, here the blue is the same. So the base color is this one, this blue, then this is the first light. So this one, the first light, I moved here because it's obvious. This is the second, the third light, and the, the fourth light is really bright, really bright accent. So maybe uh, you want to say that it's, it's not actually it's, that is it's more shadow, it's more, there are more highlights. But when I, I when I did on the icon of of Saint John the Baptist, it was easier to add more more highlights. But I wanted to to take it with small steps and to sh make you understand the difference between the yes the garments between. Uh, so I wanted to help you to to understand. Uh, The shadow in Peter's garment between legs. Uh, between legs, maybe you want to say Paul, same Paul garment, I guess. Because between legs is here or here. Yeah, so this is is not is not shadow. It's actually the it's a this is a little bit yeah this is a little bit of shadow. This is the base color, and here it's a little bit. It's just a little bit, but not not too much. Here we have some some shadow here on this part. So let's say this could be the it should be darker than the the base color. But yeah, so here also, of course, this is the this is the the, the base color. In some some icons it's obvious, in some others is you need to make it bigger because otherwise it could be confusing. But I will look for some icons with really really obvious uh, chromatic and uh, okay. It's true that we need to create a certain volume, but uh, or on the other side, we need to be aware not to exaggerate too much, and to because it needs to have a certain balance. Yes, I yeah, I saw I saw it now. Yes, before. So we need to have a certain balance, not to go too far, because otherwise. So you see, he put it this uh, shadow here, dark shadow here here a little bit here because these are the deepest points here inside a little bit on this shoulder and here is just a line not necessary it's the drawing line here is not that shallow do we do have it because we have we have lights because if we go and we put it here here also then it will be too much So, let's 
see what this is also 14 these are really really beautiful icons with uh, saint uh, matthias so we see here of course it's it's a little bit if we talk about shadow it's a little bit of shadow here because this is the deepest point here a little bit diluted of course we have it here and maybe here just a little bit but in general yeah In some icons you have, you have shadow more and some others are just going with the highlights, not so much. Uh, depends of the tonality here, for example, you don't have, you know, you don't have a shadow. It's just the drawing that is stronger here. And here also is the drawing here. But in general, this is the base color and then uh, this is the first uh, light second and the third light what is the most important is to balance them really well you know here he didn't put it the second the the third light it's only the second the first and the second here is the, the second just a little bit from the third here he put it the third light here is just the, the second here is there are three of them because this part is really really strong on this garment on the blue garment also you see this we have this is the base color first light so first light second first and second here is only the second light here is the second second only for a uh, third light so oh, sorry so it's i guess there are three three lights also but we see we see only two so one two okay we see also this one two three so you see the idea is that the white the last highlight is not it's not everywhere it's just in some some points and this gives volume without needing to add uh, a lot of shadow so so this icon also this icon look at this one and we had the one from the 12th 12th century a little bit similar but totally different so that's why it's important when you have and i i noticed this in uh in with some with some some students when they were trying to do an icon let's say you want to do this this icon of virgin mary instead of getting inspired from 12th century and doing this it's is better to go to this to 14th century and to do an icon like this so this is these are really important uh, uh, things to 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 know, and this icon we see like we talk at some point uh, about the technique with small lines. This is one of the icons where you put all the old icons. That the icon was it's not with brush strokes. It's really really small and thin lines. This is a beauty, beautiful, both of them, they are very beautiful icons, but in this album, the, the quality is really, really low of these photos. So, already for 14th century, it's a lot of assist. Yeah, this is also 14, but really naive and really superficial, really for more like like icon on glass. So this is a beautiful, beautiful icon also at the British Museum. On the Sunday of the also it's a Serbian icon. It's very nice and the garments and everything. It's very very beautiful there's some you know this this icon is yeah this is also it's really really important a little bit 
the to point out the the difference at least from my point of view the difference between the um between the russian russian uh, iconography and uh, the the byzantine uh, greek iconography so Christus Theotokos so. what do, what do you noticed what i noticed in the russian i can sometimes they they go a little bit deeper into the uh, spiritual side when we are representing uh, when we're painting an icon we need to combine the both elements spiritual and uh, uh, material so the human humanity and the divinity in the icon sometimes I found in really good uh, 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 Russian icons that they go a little bit more deeper into the to the spirituality and the spiritual side and less into the, the human side but what I noticed in the icons, like uh, let me see, from the from the Thessaloniki school, from the Paleologian uh, period, that they managed to combine both of them perfectly. So that's why I love this. Uh, let me I will show you on my tablet. So icons like like this, from my point of view, it's. Um, making combining perfectly the both of them spiritually the spiritual and uh, in the hum human so comparing this with the uh, with the Cretan school you know that it's a little bit more minimalist and less less uh, chromatic and uh, but the drawing and everything is perfect and it's a it's a beautiful beautiful icon but this one is more, let's say, more complete, the chromatic, the way that the, the face was painted and the, the colors and everything. This is a beautiful icon of the Annunciation. It's also an icon of uh, the Nativity. It's really... So Amy is asking about the about the composition. Yeah, with with the composition, it's it's a it's a really really vast uh, subject, and uh, uh, the easiest the easiest way of learning about composition is to it's also it's the same is following really good really good prototypes. And also you could you see the composition in in really really old icons at the beginning you see the composition here so you know how how the how the composition is working in this icon and uh, everything fits very well and yeah it's there are a lot to talk it's not it's not there I can't talk in general terms about the composition we need to talk about one particular icon and uh, this is a it's a you know it's a theme of of study and to point out all the elements and to to study on the subject and uh, but what well, I want I I want I plan to do this uh, by doing uh, one icon and to take that icon I don't I don't like to be superficial and to give you just a few elements of composition just like this and uh, to live with the impression that I. I talked about uh, composition and uh, now you know about compositions. Every icon have a certain composition and uh, uh, like I told you, the most important thing, the most important way, uh, the easiest way to learn is by looking at an icon like this where you know the composition is perfect and the elements are, are really well balanced and uh, like this you, you learn, you learn uh, a lot. And you're painted correctly and you get you get used to but 
I think to 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 start uh, depends of the level of everyone, but to start to do already composition of your own, it's a little bit too um, it's complicated and it's it's risky. You need to 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 get used uh, with uh, the the compositions, uh, the old composition, and to 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 study those, but. I will, uh, with with God's help, uh, I will. I hope that I will manage in the in the in this online class to to do a, a composition icon, and of course I will start with with some something a little bit easier, and at that point I will explain uh, how to fill the space. And uh, but you could look here, you know, there are some some important some important lines also, and the way that you know this part of the the video how was how was put it here, and then instead of having the wing going this side. He, the painter balanced this this uh, part this part of the with the wing and also with the with the how you call this with the with the stick so like this this space is not empty and is not unbalanced uh, from from one point then you have this this surface also and you have it this one so you see that it's it's a it's there are different different lines of of compositions it's really important to respect the the Byzantine perspective. You see all the lines are going outside from here, from this, everything. And um, everything that it's, it's, uh, it's also in the portraits and everything, in the garments, everything, because I, I, I want to be sure that I explain you right, uh, everything that is uh, close to us and outside it's is lower and everything that is on the back it's it's a little bit it's a little bit uh, higher from the from the the, the portraits and uh, from everything but it's yeah it's i think it's the the best way is to even I, when I when I paint an icon, only if it's necessary, I change a little bit the composition. But I I, I try not to to do it too, too much because I'm like here I did this icon, and uh, I I could when you when you want to change the 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 only place where you you need to change the composition. Uh, the 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 only uh, place is when you are painting churches and you have different in the main uh, uh, in the majority of the places you keep the the traditional compositions of icons only if it's necessary you need to do some changes but in general and I was I was working on churches also and I was in Romania for two years and. Uh, we were trying to get inspired as much as possible from the from the Byzantine tradition and not to to change so much. It's a it's, I think it's a dangerous field to. It's good to understand what happens, but here also you see the composition. He put this part of garment this way just to show this really really straight line, really powerful line, uh, and to 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 show this this tension between the the hands, the fact that. Christ is actually actually pulling up uh, out uh, uh, Adam from from hell, and uh, of course, so you see you see this line, you see the the mounting is also reinforcing this this line. Here, of course, the you have the space is is filled with with the uh, heaven. There are yeah different elements and different icons to to study, but I think it's. I I started to, to I was I was interested to understand also the composition and everything but what I was more interested to to understand I was and, and to do was to try to be really close to the prototypes and uh, not to 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 do things the way that I I think that should be done it's not a, even if you feel it you find it like this this is doesn't mean that it's an exercise of freedom it's a it's a way of of being sure that you are following a correct path and you you are you know you you like the 
you you want to get really good good results. So there were some some question. Is there a theology of containing the figures within the border, for example? Uh, so could you reformulate what the the fact that some the fact that some figures are going outside of the border or if um because this is also the element just to uh, make this uh, even more obvious the fact that uh, the saints are present in the icons but they are not far away on a different dimension they are they are in the icons to be to come to to meet us you know it's uh, to show the fact that uh, uh, they they are also present in our world like i told you this uh, frame it's the symbol for our world and uh, this inside is symbol for the kingdom of heaven and the fact that sometimes you'll see on the icon some parts of the garments or of the saints here also the foot of and i will show you this one on my icon So this was my, anyway, the colors are not really, uh, these are, you see, this, this kind of elements. I, I don't know if it, this was the question, you know, I put it this outside and the, the foot of uh, Adam also, this part of garment. Uh, okay, so are we allowed to change the colors? Uh, so Amy, I guess Amy is not answering to Mireille that she is allowed to change the garments color. So like I, I told you, I, I told you this before on the icon with, uh, let me see, because I found it, the prototype here of that uh, icon and the quality was better. On, the, on that icon with Christ uh, 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 at the Last uh, Supper, and I, I told you that it's really important to keep the colors from the, the the original colors from the garments. Yes, this is I have a I have a really good good quality of this is one one detail. Yes, I know. Yeah, I mean, yes, I was I was joking, but oh, good uh, quality of of that icon. So you see the the red garment uh, with the blue some blue reflection. This was this is a really small icon, but the the colors are are really really beautiful. Uh, and also, it's it's another another element that is really important. You know, in an unusual way, you see on this icon, God was undressed from this fro from from his blue garment that it's a symbol of divinity and on the other side you'll see a lot of blue garments that are un unusual we we have other icons like here for example we have other icons with with the apostles and their garments are not so not so many blue garments you know like here in this in this situation but what happens is the fact that God at the Last Supper, he was, uh, it was the first time when he was giving them the communion. And uh, the communion, what means is the fact that we, we are uh, uh, communing with, with, with God, with the, by his blood and, uh, and uh, by his body, bread and, and um, wine. And uh, on the other side, we have the Saint Apostle, the Paul saying that uh, from now on, now on, I'm not the one who is living, it's Christ who is living inside of myself. With the presence of the Holy Spirit, with, with the communion, with everything, we give shelter to God in our souls. And this is this was this is the theology of this, and the symbol is the fact that the God Christ was present in in their you know in on in the the apostles, and they were and they were dressed with with Christ. And uh, you could notice also that 
the the majority of the garments they are underneath is the first garment that they were dressed is not the second just to show the fact that these garments they are underneath they are inside the christ the divinity is inside of them because they were eating the the holy body and the holy blood of of christ and they were communion they communicate with 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 christ um So uh, this is was the the icon. Let me see for saints and images. Now for in general, so yes, uh, so Mireille says for saints. So what we could change is uh, is we could we could change the the tonality. So we have this icon with of Saint Luke. In general, the best way to check to see okay what is the color but we, we I, I remember talking about about colors and about uh, about changing or not changing the colors on on garments we could change the tonality if here we have this color if i do it brighter or darker this is my option it's no problem because anyway here this is a photocopy it's not i don't know the original doesn't look exactly this way here if I cho choose the blue, if I choose to have this first, the, the blue background instead of this one darker, it's my option, it's no problem. But this garment needs to be blue. This is something that I'm not allowed to change. For for everyone, for saints and for... Uh, and like I told you, of course, they are icons, depends, some 12th century icons done by different artists and some of them, they are more superficial or not, some of them, but the best way to to know here also the the colors for adam and eve and the colors for the the king david uh, it's it's really important the best way to check if we are doing something correct is to look at different icons the most of them needs to be from the 14th 15th century because those are the period where they were the best the best period of byzantine iconography and to try to get inspired from from those those periods of time and like this we are sure that we are we are in the the, the right uh, you know we are we are doing the, the right thing getting inspired and making a you know a general idea and say okay i found it the the color of virgin mary this on the garment of the annunciation this is also really important because in different moments uh in different icons the colors could be different for for the same saint like in situation with christ like i showed you so that's why it's really it's really important to to look at different icons let's say i want to do the icon of annunciation i'm paying attention at the angels and the angel in some icons the, the he he wears green but the majority of the icon he is full of uh, of light really light garments and i make a general idea and then this is my my freedom and uh, my answer to my prayers and the way that I, I feel that should be correct but what is the most important the color that i'm choosing so i'm not talking about the tonality a darker or a brighter red or blue i'm talking exactly blue or green i'm choosing it's uh, after i study a little bit different different the same uh, scene the same uh, composition in different moment of history or in different uh, 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 tradition of Byzantine iconography. So this is a Serbian icon. I'm looking at Serbian. Then I look to see how Teofan uh, was doing uh, the the Annunciation. How was done this by Panselinos? How this Annunciation was done by by um, uh, russian painters or something like this and then i just make the uh an idea and uh, i choose my my own which which one i i like the most is true that most of the time uh, our taste is developing and uh, at some point maybe we could choose a different icons and then but what i i uh, yeah so uh this is this is i think it's 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 important to try to 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 stay to stick with the with the colors from the prototypes 
and uh, what kind of tonality it's up to everyone it's really important with the colors to to create some kind of harmony you know like here for example the painter uses the same red here for here so like this creates some kind of unity and uh, yeah for the for the buildings for everything so if you put it here this pillow then you put it here also so to have the same color to try to uh, i don't know how it's in english but was like a rappel or uh, in french was a rappel of color so just to 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 use the same color to create to balance a little bit the, the chromatic Okay, now I will uh, now I will check again to see what happens with our. Let's hope that we won't stay until. So it's still a little bit sticky, but I guess what time is? I guess at at uh, in. Uh, in 10, 10 minutes we could start to put the gold leaf it's, it's starting to make that, that noise but it's still a little bit sticky but my fingerprint is, is not uh, you know you can't see it it's... okay just leave it a little bit more and uh, in meantime I will finish my my trip in the byzantine history if you have questions i hope that was was interesting i just wanted to show so now we are in the the best period of byzantine history 14th century 15th century is still very good see this this beautiful icon uh 16th century still we you could find uh, good good icons we, we saw this uh, but starting with uh, at the the end of 16th century beginning of 17th century it's a period of decline uh, of course in the 15th century the the, the falling of byzantine uh, empire was a cause also and uh, on the other side what happens in the orthodox uh, countries it's a big influence of the Renaissance period in and also in the icons and we I will show you this I guess I have it in this album otherwise I will I will show you a different one um, so okay but there were also really you know painters who wanted to do really more more modern way of this was also this is 15 15th century icon you see how many elements are not you know it's a, it's a mess here they are not working you know all these these colors the the highlights is too big the is too wide for for the rest of the lights you know so the space that takes the highlights on this surface is really small is really big and the the, the previous colors are are really really small also really thin so here it's okay it's working but here it's you know it, it has no volume you lost the volume the hands are really big and the face this is too too bright also comparing with i guess we had the saint john the evangelist somewhere here and no was it yeah Maybe it's for the yeah yeah we of course so you have this we have this uh, this is Saint John the Evangelist it's a totally different different way the garments and everything really well balanced mm -hmm. and we talk about it and then we have this one so comparing a little bit you could see the the difference the drawing everything is really rough and. Also, you see this movement of the hand, you know, like like uh, we talk about Adam, it's you no know, holding the, the hand like this. Then we have the same mark, 
very very beautiful we talk a little bit Saint Paul the Apostle really really nice really nice icon let me show you a little bit because I had this I did a reproduction after this this icon I really love the 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 uh, the drawing and everything but I change a little bit and I added some some elements just to, to show you so this is my my icon oh sorry this my system is okay perfect So we we are we are allowed to to change of course and to to do things a little bit different so you see this is this was the icon and this is the the icon that i i painted when i did this i looked at different different uh, different icons with uh, saint paul and i was adding a little bit few few more elements on the garments and i was looking at different different garments but the main lines I, I keep the I keep the, the lines they were here and the drawing and everything. So if we want to let's say this is the, the, the point where we are getting a little bit more creative and we try to I, I change a little bit this part and I was looking at different icons. But you see it's still here is green and I keep it is green here. Here this garment is uh, dark red and the, the gray reflection and I did the same so the gray reflection I didn't change the big big lines of the of the icon so on the face also I, I worked more in the, the uh, paleologian style with a little bit more more color on the on the, the face and the, the the beard also I did the beard but Everything, every element that I put it here, I was trying to, to find them in, in different icons with St. Paul or, you know, so it's, it's nothing was, was just by my, my own uh, interpretation or trying to find to be original. But just an example to show you. But this is, I did this, I, I started to do this and uh, to have more courage a little bit to, to have this, uh, to have, to have the, the courage to, to improve, let's say, to add a little bit more elements on an icon after, after a few years of work and understanding of, of the Byzantine icons. So Amy's same shape board keeps the composition the same. The what shape shape board? You refer to this to to this uh, thing or to the? Yeah, it's not. It's not only it's the drawing. It's really, really similar. The hands, everything, the movement, the composition in general is is the same. Uh, just maybe the book is a little bit different, uh, and uh, of course the garment and on the face. You know? Yes, but I you know I understood. Yes, but the idea is of course you have a different shape, but you have to, to change the composition. Uh, yeah, but the idea is I think it's the direction comes from the composition. The composition is actually dictating you what kind of uh, board to, to take. I think it's, it's less complicated to order a board that fits the composition than the 
to have a board and to try to fit the composition it in, inside. I don't know, I'm not, I was, you know, I'm not really crazy about uh, uh, trying to have my, the compositions of my own. When you are, uh, when you are working on a church, you need to do this in some, in different, different, some, some situations. But in general, even there, when you paint a church, normally I, I had a, I have a master degree in, in architecture and I, the the main point of this uh, master for three years was to try to uh, put in contact uh, different people who are working in building one church and the idea was uh, to create some teams with architects with theologian with painters with uh, uh, social assistants with um, um, builders you know people who are, who are building with and priests also in this team so like this to when we are starting a project of building a church to to be together and to talk uh, everyone to come with uh, his opinion in uh, from the beginning because what happens most of the time we have issues in in churches because the architects is not they are not aware of the fact that uh, what they are building, it's supposed the surface that they are they are creating, you know. So the the surface, like like here we have Saint Paul, the surface that they are creating are meant to be for uh, for for to to be painted. So let's say that in one church, the part that we we need to paint the icon, like in our situation, I give you a really easy example. The icon of Saint Paul, you know, and it's supposed to be this way. The architects give this space and said, "Okay, here I created this space. Here are pillows, pillows, and whatever, so corners or something like this." And he gives this space to paint the icon of Saint Paul. And then what do you do? You paint it this way, and you have a lot of space. So here comes a problem of composition and you need to try to find ways to fill this space. Sometimes you put different uh, Christian decoration or whatever, flowers or whatever, just to fill the space, not to leave it empty because it's ugly. But the best way is to talk with the architect at the beginning. He will uh, show you the, the project and say, okay, here it's supposed to be an icon like this. So this is the space. And then move the pillows a little bit more and give me another space because here I need to put another saint like this one and here I need so I need to have the same distance so these are the situation uh, that could be avoided if we talk from the beginning and that's why it's better when, when the church is built to to the builder the architect everyone to to be in contact with the painter also so to create but this is a simple problem but you have a big uh, fist uh, the big scenes and you need to 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 work more so and with the board is the same so i think it's better to order a board and to try to use the boards that you have for the uh, for the for the icon that fits there instead of because it's, it's risky if you start to cut the board from here or if you start to cut it from here it doesn't look right so because you you want to fit the board in that uh, so we were here we talk about this uh, part okay here it's already uh, 15 still 15th century but this is you know see very really naive and but i don't want to to offend no one but what happens now there are also some painters who are doing almost all their garments this way just the drawing, maybe the drawing, it's a little bit more, more better done. And just to put one line here, one light here, and it's enough. And you see, but because I'm not talking about icons with Virgin Mary like this, where the garments has no highlights this way, you know. I'm talking in general, this is a whole picture and it's a lot of, there are a lot of elements and all of them, they are, they are done this way just a garment and a few lines this is a really superficial way really naive if you want in you know in the drawing and everything uh, 
uh in the no i think in the proportions so mire is asking if it's a different between the russian and the byzantine greek icons in the face proportions eyes nose mouth uh yeah not not necessary but uh, we we could we could have a look the idea is that of course to to keep the same uh, the same byzantine proportions because the russians so these are the uh, sometimes it's hard to see to see the the size but it's not what do you want to to what uh, let me let me find a, a portrait of christ uh really byzantine portrait of christ to make a little bit of comparison so So we have this we have this portrait okay we could take this this one but this is actually really close to the to the russians so yeah, i know you don't i don't i don't think it's it, here it's also it's hard to see there are some elements that you don't see the beard and everything but mostly the, it's the same line of byzantine you know perspective you know like we were talking about this this curved line uh this eye is smaller this one is bigger this part is bigger this this part or part is bigger this one is smaller so the same the nose is going a little bit slightly up so it's the same here the perspective it's 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 switched it's different in some some icons but uh let me find one that is a little bit more similar to this but Anyway, the idea is that it's not not a big big change on the proportions, of course. Uh, what the the Russians are doing sometimes is on the level of the eyes. Look, I have this icon also here. Uh, they are putting really strong on the. It's true that this icon is old and it's hard to see, but I I notice on the, the majority of uh, Russian icons, they put black here. Not so much on the eyebrows and not so much on the accents or on the beard. And this way you'll see the eyes more, you know, the eyes are more. And this gives you also really more deep uh, spiritual uh, meaning. And uh, so, but it's the proportions are the same because the Russians, they learn also from the Greeks, from Theophan uh, the Greek it's they they came a little bit uh, later and they discovered the orthodoxy so okay yeah but it's it's not not big changes is the chromatic it's a little bit more it's not so bright the chromatic if you want more more yellowish more warm warm colors but this was also this is an influence of the of the 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 climate you know of the fact that uh, when you usually you have the i was i was moving several times in different different countries and uh, i noticed that when it's really in the winter and every you have the tendency like a painter you 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 want to to paint really warm color when outside it's it's cold and it's gray so uh, and i think it's the same thing happens with with the russian painters they use really really warm warm color uh, comparing with the Greeks who are using really bright, uh, really bright color, really cold, sometimes color because outside in the weather was was warm, was was different, so it was be was better. Um, yeah, so but you know, you know the the, the Greeks or the, the Greeks uh, icons like this one, so you see the difference between the colors. Like this, so you see more, more warm color on this, and uh, or this one with with Virgin Mary, and the face is more developed. You know, it's more worked on, but this, this is not for all the icons, especially this this is an icon uh, from 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 this uh, like the Serbian technique, the Thessaloniki technique, really really worked on the on the face. 
Okay, we saw this. So here, okay, it was already 15th, 15th century. But here we are seeing a big influence of uh, uh, Renaissance in this icon. So still the faces, if you, let's get it close a little bit. If you look at the faces of the angels, they have some, some, they look more Byzantine, but the rest is, they have some, some still, you know, it's a, it's a mixture between the angel is worked with this kind of garments that is not Byzantine and remember the angel from the, from the, Uh, yes, the yeah the the proplasma it's sometimes is is darker of course because if the colors are are darker on the face of course that the proplasma and the uh, sankir is 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 darker. But now I think the modern good um, iconography is getting really close to the to the. To, to the Greek style, it's it's still keeps uh, uh, some particularities of the Russian icons. But I think it, a good a good a really good iconographer has no no boundaries, no limits. In you know, we could get influence from all the from the all the, the Orthodox iconography, and I think it's a big big advantage to that we need to to be aware and uh, uh, to to use it. And the fact that we have access to all the all this, uh, so we see elements right here, flowers, and uh, you know the garments. We have a monkey. It's you know it's a from the theological point of view, it's a mess up. Mm, it just has has no no meaning. You know, it's not. It's we we totally lost the this this kind of annunciation where every male element is uh, full of theology and makes sense. And here or in the other one. With, with this one here so look at this one and then look at the monkeys and everything so you see it has a little bit the garment it's a little bit uh, uh, has some 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 kind of Byzantine influence but you know the buildings are make no sense the perspective is switched so it's Still, this Jerry still has a Byzantine perspective, but you know it was it's a mixture of elements, and mixing the two of them is makes makes no sense. But this was the, the moment. Still here we have this this beautiful beautiful like an uh, um, of Byzantine icons. Look here, I this this icon bothers me a lot because I it's so. So you you have, so we have this. Everything is Byzantine, it's well worked, and then you have the saints that they were painted in the. Uh, I don't know it's, what were Teotokos. What were the the saints? Dominic and Francis Francis the Assisi and Dominic. Yeah. So painted it like this and of course that the clothes they were like this but this doesn't mean that because uh, the clothes of the apostles they were the same way you know the same uh, the movement and the shadow but we painted the Byzantine so here this is 16th, 15th century okay here also big big icons here also some some influence. See here this icon also another mixture. I guess these were icons who are making the connection between. So this is already 16th century. You see everything here is Renaissance realistical painting, and only these these angels are a little bit more close to the Byzantine Byzantine style. So these two angels. 
here I've still got uh, here it's 17th century you know the garments and everything and here is why it's full of renaissance the the idea is that you know I okay I will just before to forget uh, I don't know I will show you what was the I don't know what Emmy was asking for maybe this Emmy could be useful you have all the you have the address also the phone number uh, but I was what year was this published? Uh, Ninety-five. So, but I think they they still have it in the. So I just want to um, to explain a little bit. It's not that I have problems with uh, with Renaissance or something like this, but the the main argument for for a good icon, besides many others, is that uh, uh, on the moment when you do an icon with a saint or with a feast with Ren uh, with resurrection or annunciation or uh, it's when you put that icon in the church and you are listening all the the the, the chanting the the liturgy and the, the service especially for that feast today uh it's very important to 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 see and to 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 make the connection between the the icon the elements on the icon and the theology of the icon with the the, the theology of the, the that feast and this means that that icon is is totally in the in the spirit in the the in the inspiration of the the holy the same holy spirit and the icons like i told you at the beginning they they make this uh, harmony between human and god and on the other side uh, the painting of renaissance is uh, keeping us always more on to the to this to the human side perfect with you know with everything with a perfection with a human perfection but not uh, helping us too much to to go a little bit to higher or deeper you know at the spiritual spiritual level keeping us also on the on this uh, perfection on the on the earth uh, i hope that we could already start to put the, the gold leaf. Let's have a look. I'm... So it's it's good. I don't know what, what time is it. So it's two o'clock. We we started at uh, at ten, ten thirty. Okay, so yeah, we we had like uh, so it depends now, but it's okay. Now I will show you just to put the camera a little bit further. Okay, I I take the the gold leaf. So the gold leaf is like this. I take it this way, and I try to if you do it this way, you could hold it. And I I start from the corners. I press here. I let it go down. Then I put my finger here. This is really, really important because otherwise I will I will scratch the gold. So to be sure that the, the gold leaf is steady and they go really soft everywhere.
So anyway, I need to to press a little bit, but always I'm keeping this uh, this uh, paper with uh, with my other hand because it's important if I let it go to scratch the the gold. Okay, and when I'm sure that I cover all the surface, could try to take the gold. Okay. Now I just let it this way and go on the other corner. The same thing. It's better to go a little bit outside than much inside. The same thing. So here I go a little bit, I go a little bit uh, inside on top of, of this, of the previous uh, gold leaf because I want to be sure that I'm not leaving uh, empty space. And here, because I don't want to touch with my finger the gold leaf, I'm doing this way. I just put this gold leaf, this uh, this paper. You need one. The part where the gold leaf was on, it's shinier, and this one is more matte. So I put the shinier part. It's it's much easier like this. I have already a little bit of gold, so I put this part here on top and then I could press on top of the gold and also on the paper sheets easy. And again, with the paper here, I go because I want to press to be sure that this part is stick very well. Okay. Now 
just cut a little bit because And here also you need to pay attention not to touch with your finger the the mixed tune. Just to go and here we are doing the same. Here because I don't have too much space to and without touching the, the gold I just put this so be sure that you are you are keeping this uh, let me show you this way okay so if the angle is not really good, please let me know. You could write the comments because I, I can't see. You. Sometimes I'm looking at the camera, other times I'm, I'm concentrated on this. So please let me know to be sure that you are, you are seeing very good from the perfect angle. With the oil gilding, patching and uh, covering the small mistakes, it needs to be uh, done as, as less as possible because, uh, because oil gilding, even if you try to make it as good as possible, it won't be, won't be, won't be perfect like, like water gilding. So that's why it's really important to try to use, to cover the surface with one one gold leaf if it was possible to cover with one gold leaf all the, the the background gold was perfect but like this we need to use small gold leaves to cover but we try to avoid this kind of uh... and i'm doing this right now because the mixtion is is fresh and i i need to 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 use this advantage and to stick to stick the gold leaf okay
so pay attention because if you don't hold well the if you don't Uh, yes, Mirei, we yeah we we overlap the gold leaf uh, for one millimeter. Yes. No, it should be. It's better to 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 put it on top a little bit. It's it's much better because this way you are sure that uh, you don't leave a gap between the two of them because this. So what happens if you? But I, I will explain you. I explain you after I put the gold leaf because to have some dust. On. Um, actually, my style. I advise you if you have time and you want, it's better to cut to try to cut the shape of the of the 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 figures. But I'm a I'm sacrificing the goal for the to be sure that it, I cover really well and I don't have too many too many lines. But it's it's not it's not necessary to to do the exactly the same way. Cut it. I actually cut it the wrong way, but we'll find a place for this also. So you see that I hold with with both hands or with both uh, fingers because to be sure that is not it's not moving you know if I do it with only one it could move like this and you will make a big scratch with the paper on top of the gold so that's why it's better to keep with both hands to be sure that this paper does not move And again,
So you could see that what is up here is just the the, the see the, the how much I went on top of this of this uh, gold leaf. So now next step is to check to see if uh, if everything is covered the easiest way to to see if uh, you have uh, missed one spot is to see if it's reflecting because that that part is really shiny and it's it's white so it's not but okay no. Just to put the, the gold leaf away. We keep only one. Just to keep one to um, if we need to cover something. Okay, and I'm doing, I'm going back on the whole surface with this, everywhere to be sure that it's so always with the, the part that is shiny, eh? yes. Uh, For the gold, if you want, in this case, I have something on top of the gold, some dust or whatever. I use, we use this really, really soft natural hair brushes or the, these ones are synthetic, but are really good for makeup brushes. You could find it also in the shops for, for painters, but they are more expensive than the makeup brushes, but really, you know, good, good makeup brushes, not, uh, not those, the really cheap, uh, because the, the hair is, is really soft if they are expensive or this kind of brushes, you know, really, really soft hair.
So if there are some small points like here, you could go this way. So I try now to go from one corner to the other and to cover all the surface. when applying one for what uh, I, I use we use a burnisher to prepare the the surface but that that is the only only point when you use the burnisher for this technique for the oil gilding at the end you don't need a burnisher to do this to to burnish the gold is, is not working with the oil gilding technique. It will destroy the destroy the gold. So but to, to burnish the, the gesso we, we yes we, we did that in the last uh, in the last video so That is, please pay attention not to, to hold this paper very well and not to go with your fingers on top of the gold. We could try really, really soft to see if it's because if to see if we could uh, just to clean this this part and if uh, the the size is okay you could go with this really soft with this brush if the size is dry and try to clean it because you you leave scratches on the
so I try to take the extra gold leaf from this uh, it's better to to have a natural life when you are doing this because it's easier to see if the the size is too fresh and uh, with this uh, with the brush you are scratching the the gold So this was the first, and then I use this uh, chamois. I think it's uh, deer leather from the you know it's used to to clean the the cars, and but really 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 soft soft part. And I try to see if uh, it could maybe it's a little bit too early, but. Just to let's say to polish a little bit the 
the surface really really soft So this is have a, a little bit of matte uh, surface, but on the moment when we we apply the the sherlock became even even brighter. Just to try to see if it's if we could uh, make the the circle. So do just try to so I have some tape here on this and uh, it's a plastic cup and I made a hole and then I fit the hole exactly here
So I just leave the, the weights of the, the compass. I don't I don't push on this side. Because otherwise I will scratch. I hope that the the line for the halo was was correct. Can I this? So now I can't fix. It. Okay, so this is how the circles are are looking. And uh, like I told you, with the share lock, everything will be even more shinier. So it's almost uh, three o'clock. Okay, well, I will do this for the Virgin Mary, and then Okay, let's try to make 